Hello everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY. Thank you so much for joining me today on my channel where I love to bring you the best tips and tools for creating beautiful home decor on a budget. Today I am here with six quick and easy budget-friendly winter DIYs to help you transition after Christmas into the new year but with some color. You know, sometimes winter is already so bleak and once we take down all of our nice, colorful Christmas decorations, our house can feel really bleak. So I am bringing you winter DIYs with little pops of color. I really hope you enjoy them. For our first project today, we're making some snowflake art using some repurposed canvases, some wood snowflakes, and some paint sticks. So the first thing I'm doing is taking these 12 by 12 square wrapped canvases from an activity we did this summer, and I'm just taking my fingertip knife and cutting on the outside of the staples until I can get my canvas off of the frame all in one piece. I do want to keep those to possibly do a project with in the future. So once you get around all those corners and get that off, then all you need to do then is take your staple remover and go around and remove the staples. So this is what you'll end up with, the nice wood frame that is underneath the canvas. And I am making two of these, but I'm going to give them a coat of my Waverly antique wax, brushing it on, and then wiping off the excess. This wood um, pretty much soaks up the antique wax pretty good. So we're going to make two that have that. Now I have used these before. I got these wood snowflakes from a local craft store, dollar store, um, but you can find something similar at craft stores. I'm just filling in the hanging hole there with some wood filler. And then my color palette for my winter DIYs, you're going to see very quickly, are very colorful. I'm using my crimson red chalk paint. I'm using a navy blue acrylic paint because that's what I have on hand. And I'm going to paint each of my snowflakes, one navy blue and one red. Then I'm taking some paint sticks. I believe it took 10 to go all the way across the back of the canvas frame. So I'm using the light blue color that's called pool and I'm going to paint those paint sticks. I did have to trim them a little bit with my saw. Then on the back of my canvas frame, I am taking those and with hot glue, I'm gonna glue them down one at a time until I've made a kind of shiplap backing on the back of my frame. You've seen me do this before. It's one of my favorite ways to repurpose frames, whether they're from canvases or just from artwork. Once you get all of those glued down, then we'll be ready to glue our snowflakes then to the inside of our frame. So here's that pool blue. I'm really just loving the dark wood color, the light blue, the navy blue, and the red, the nice bright red. So then all you're gonna do is just hot glue your snowflake down to the center of the paint stick backing and your projects are complete. And here's the completed look. This technique can be used for absolutely any color scheme, holiday or season. For DIY number two, we're going to use some wood cubes to make these wood block winter friends. I'm showing you the little craft cubes at the bottom, but you could also use the inside or outside of the wood drawers there to get two different sizes. So use what you have. I'm choosing to use six of these wood cubes. They're very lightweight. I'm taking three sets of two and with wood glue, 
I'm lining those up and gluing them together to make our three winter friends. Now, once that wood glue is dry, I'm taking my ink chalk paint by Web Waverly and I'm gonna paint one of these completely on all of the sides with the black. My second one, I'm going to paint completely with my white chalk paint. And then my third one, I'm using this, it was a caramel um, type of color of just the acrylic paint that they carry at Walmart. So here's our three wood friends so far with the paint complete. Now our black one, we're going to turn into a little penguin. So I'm just taking my pencil and I'm just kind of outlining the inside part that we will then paint white. So it's kind of like the front of his face and his stomach, but taking my white chalk paint again, I did have to do two layers to go um, completely cover over the black, but it dried fairly quickly. So just using your brush and a steady hand, make that rounded part in the center, let it dry, and then go ahead and do a second coat. On the white one, we're making this one into a snowman. So I'm using my Elmer's paint marker from Walmart. It's a fine tip in black, and I'm gonna do my snowman's eyes, and then four little small buttons down the center of his body. Our brown one, if you didn't already guess, is gonna be a little gingerbread man. Two little eyes, and then I'm gonna make larger buttons down the center of his body as well. Then taking, at first I took a white paint marker and did kind of the wavy frosting going around the outside of the gingerbread man, but you'll see I'm gonna add something to that in a moment. My snowman and my gingerbread man needed little rosy cheeks, so I just took a light pink acrylic paint that I already had on hand and a fine uh, paintbrush there and just drawing some circles for the cheeks for each of these two characters. So back to the gingerbread man, I wanted to make him a little more dimensional. So I decided to take the puffy paint to go over those wavy white lines to make his frosting around the front of his body. I do have a link for this puffy paint in my Amazon storefront if you are interested. Then while that was drying, I have an orange paint marker that I'm coming to my penguin just to draw his little beak and then also his two little feet at the bottom of the blocks. And we will also use that orange paint marker to draw the carrot nose for our snowman. Once our cheeks and buttons are dry, I'm using my white paint marker just to add little accents to, first of all, to the cheeks, and then I will do a little bit on the gingerbread man's um, buttons as well. I draw some black eyes for our penguin. Then for all three of my characters, I'm gonna use a different pattern of ribbon to tie in a knot as a little scarf as a finishing touch. And one final piece for our snowman. I'm taking one of these snowman hat ornaments from Dollar Tree that I have left over from Christmas crafting. And I'm just hot gluing this to the top of his head. I think it makes it look super, super cute and gives him more of a snowman appearance. Then coming back to the penguin, I'm just outlining his beak and his feet with black marker. Now just adding in some of those last fine details to our characters.
and here they are i love them so much they turned out so much cuter than i even imagined and you could make these in different sizes depending on what size wood cubes you use If you are stopping by my channel for the first time today, welcome. I'm so honored that you're here. I hope you enjoy what you see and will consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button. If you are returning to my channel as a viewer or subscriber, welcome back. I'm glad you're here and I really hope you enjoy what you see today. To carry on the snowman theme, I'm going to take some of these five gallon paint sticks and some orange foam to make a paint stick snowman sign. So the first thing I'm doing is I have five of the sticks. I'm leaving the regular length. One I'm cutting a little shorter that we'll use across for the brim of his hat. I'm using some of the giant craft sticks from Walmart that I'm trimming so that when I glue them across the back of our paint sticks, it will hold our sign together. I believe I used five of them with this tight bond wood glue. Make sure those are dried all the way. Then you can see I'm using that stick that I cut a little shorter and I'm going to place it at an angle there. I'm just drawing myself a line so I know where I can stop my white paint and then move to black paint. So using Waverly chalk paint in white and ink, I'm going to paint my snowman's face and then where his hat will be at the top of that diagonal line and let your paint dry completely. Then you'll also want to uh, paint that piece that we cut that will be the brim of the hat um, on the front and all of the side edges with the black chalk paint as well. Then once everything is dry, take some hot glue and glue that down diagonally over your space where the white and black paint meet each other. Now our snowman has a hat. I'm taking some orange of this uh, fun foam and I'm gonna just draw a nose and cut that out. You could use felt for this. You could use, um, oh gosh, if you had any of those jute string carrots from Easter time, that would be super cute glued on there as well. Then just using my black paint marker, draw on a couple of eyes and a mouth, whatever style you prefer for your snowman faces. And I also added some little lines on the carrot nose to make it look like it had the little carrot ridges. And I realized I didn't want those sharp corners at the top of the nose. So just taking some scissors, I rounded those out. And then we'll go ahead and hot glue our carrot nose to our snowman. Once that was on, I took some of my leftover Christmas greenery and floral picks and cut some pieces apart. I wanted to add some little decoration to the brim of our snowman's hat. I'm going to use some of these white berries and one other type of little greenery leaves and then we'll be able to move on to finish up our snowman. Of course my snowman needed a scarf so I used a piece of the red and black buffalo check fleece scarf from Dollar Tree. I'm just kind of figuring out how long I need it to be. And I'm going to glue this edge here to the left side of my snowman. We're gonna wrap it around once and then kind of tuck it under and tie it in a loose knot. So I had cut a piece from a full size scarf. You could probably get four snowman size scarves from one of those. Then I wanted to take my puffy paint again because my snowman's hat was just too clean. And so just going and kind of making drips, um, different lengths. I'm going to add some snow here to the top of his hat and kind of smooth it out with the tip. And then do the same thing along the brim of the hat as well. And to me, this was like the finishing touch 
to this snowman just to elevate it one step further and I love how it turned out. You could put a hanger on this and hang it on your front door. You could add a saying, let it snow, or just have it where it could sit on a shelf. Just adding a couple little dots to the eyes for a little bit more accent. And here's my snowman, isn't he so cute? And this is literally two packs, so $2 of paint sticks, and then a piece of a scarf, some foam, and some florals. So inexpensive to make, but so big and such a cute statement. For DIY number four, I'm gonna come back to four more of those craft cubes from Dollar Tree. I know I only show three here. I do end up adding another one. I'm also going to use this Let It Snow stencil from Magnolia Design Company. So again, I show three cubes here, but I am actually going to end up using four. I'm giving them a good coat of my Waverly chalk paint in the color white. Then using this blue chalk ink, I'm going to use one word of this stencil at a time. So I'm going to do the word let and then a snowflake on my first cube. Then once I clean my stencil and come back to it, I'm going to do it on a second cube. And then you'll see here in a minute, I'm gonna glue two of my cubes together because the word snow was just a little bit too big for one cube. And so we'll end up with four cubes to have the saying, let it snow with also some really cute snowflakes. Now here I'm showing you different ways you could arrange your blocks to make the saying let it snow. I liked it in a cube like this. So I took some of the black and white buffalo check ribbon from Dollar Tree. This was my last piece. It was just long enough to tie around my four blocks and just tie a knot at the top. Dovetail the ends a little bit as a really cute and easy to make shelf sitter. Please be sure to check the description box below the video title. You might have to click a little down arrow to see all the links for any craft tools or supplies that you might see me use that you are interested in getting more information on. I loved all of today's projects, but I think this one is my favorite. This little winter village I'm going to make using some scrapbook paper and the wood houses from Dollar Tree and some paint sticks. So this picture here on a scrapbooking paper journal card is my inspiration. It's from this paper pack by Echo Park called I Love Winter. I love the color scheme. You saw me use it in my very first DIY today with the blues and the red. So using some of the wood rectangle pieces also from Dollar Tree, I'm going to be cutting some of these pieces to add to these houses. This one here, I'm going to make um, a little slanted roof. So I'm gonna cut those two pieces. A couple of my houses are going to have rectangles um, straight at the top you'll see for the roof. And then this tall house was just begging me to turn into that church. So using the rectangle there and drawing lines, I'm showing where I'm going to cut it in order for it to fit behind that spot. I did have a little trouble deciding where to make the point of the steeple, but you'll see I'm gonna use my miter box and my saw. I can use the angle cuts there to make the tops of my steeple. 
A couple of these houses I'm just going to paint and then two of them I'm going to use scrapbook paper. So here I'm just tracing the outline of my house and then using some matte finish Mod Podge, we'll go ahead and get that scrapbook paper on. This one's going to have kind of a wood shiplap look on this house and just get that all smoothed out nicely with no air bubbles so that it can dry completely. This one's going to have crimson red as the accent color. So I'm painting one full rectangle for the roof and then I had this small piece that was the perfect size to be the door of this house. For the church, I'm tracing on this kind of teal blue, has snowflakes on it. You'll see it once I cut it out and turn it over. I'm also going to put some of this at the top of my steeple. So I'm just tracing there the triangle part at the top and we will also cut that out so we can Mod Podge both pieces at the same time. This was definitely my project that kept evolving. You can see I'm just pulling more and more random stuff. I had some of this cork from Dollar Tree that I'd used for another project. I decided I wanted to add this to my church for the door and also a little bit at the base of the steeple. So once I had that all cut out, now I'm going to Mod Podge the two pieces of that teal colored snowflake scrapbook paper, the triangle here at the top of my steeple, and then the larger piece just to be the main uh, building part of the church. Again, smoothing it out, let it dry completely. This is a thicker um, scrapbook paper. I did put a link in my Amazon storefront to this paper pack if you are interested. This house, I decided to use that Lagoon teal colored chalk paint and our accent roof and um, door on this one are gonna be the dark brown color called Truffle in the Waverly chalk paint. These are those two rectangular slats that I did cut a piece off of using my saw and miter box. And then our last house, another one, the same size and shape, we're gonna paint the actual house with the truffle, dark brown, and then our roof and um, door are going to be that navy blue acrylic paint that we used for one of our snowflakes in our first project. I'm excited about using these colors, this color combination for my winter decor. So plan on seeing some more in future videos. The cork is adhesive, so just peel off the backing and we've already stuck the door down. And now this piece is going to line up with that triangle, but you can see I've left a little bit of just the wood. And that is where I'm going to put my hot glue to be able to attach this to the back of the church shape. And now that our pieces are dry, we can start assembling our doors and our roofs onto our houses. I'm also in a minute going to paint some tumbling tower blocks to be some chimneys. So this house again is going to have just a kind of a straight roof at the top here. You can see some Scrabble tiles kind of laying around. I was planning on using just um, some scrapbook paper or cardstock for my windows, but I thought these Scrabble tiles, the back sides were perfect. And you always have those letters that you're never gonna use like X's. I'm never gonna use all those X's. And I love how the natural wood color just really fit in nicely with the color scheme. Now you might be wondering how I got this door rounded. Well, it is one of the wood backed dominoes from Dollar Tree. So I just made it a rounded door. And then like I said, I'm gonna paint five of these tumbling tower blocks. Um, three of them will be chimneys and two will be used on a window. This is one of the wood lemon stickers. I painted that white to add to our church. Here I am adding this chimney just to the back side of our straight roof there. There's the lemon or orange um, sticker that I just painted white to be the little window there at the top. And I had these crosses from Dollar Tree as well that I have not used yet. And I thought that was just the perfect last touch for our church, for our winter village. These were so fun to put together. 
If you cannot find the Dollar Tree wood shapes, um, but know somebody maybe who could just take some wood for you from the hardware store and cut these shapes, I encourage you to do this. These are a nice, decent size and were really fun to put together, like I said, with that one picture as my inspiration. Scrabble tiles for windows, dominoes used for doors. Just have some fun and kind of look at what you have and what you can create with things that you have. There's that domino I was showing you for the rounded door for this one house. Those other two tumbling tower blocks I'm doing kind of as, I guess, kind of like shutters. And I made these four Scrabble tiles into one window. So I'm gonna glue all of that on. Then we'll glue our two rectangles for our roof and our village will be almost complete. I decided I wanted a tree for my little village and I'm using some of the other super cute patterns that come in this paper pack. I have 11 pieces of paint stick there. You can see the bottom piece is about seven inches and then I just went smaller by a half an inch each time I went up. You can make your tree as tall or as skinny as you want. I decided on five, I think it's five of the pieces randomly. I'm going to cut a piece of the cute scrapbook paper to go over top. We're gonna Mod Podge those. And then the rest of the pieces of our tree, I'm going to paint some of the same colors that I'm already using in the houses. So this bottom piece is that same um, snowflake pattern that I have on the church and just Mod Podge that on, smooth it out, and let it dry. We're also going to use, what is that? That's white. We're gonna use truffle, pool, crimson, mineral, and then that navy blue acrylic paint as well. Once the Mod Podge scrapbook paper was dry, you can just take the fingertip knife or an X-Acto and trim the other edge so that it's flush with the paint stick. These are one gallon paint sticks, by the way, that you get 10 in a pack for a dollar. And then we're gonna start assembling our pieces on another whole complete paint stick. So I'm just starting with the navy blue at the top and you'll see here every few, I'm just getting it centered each piece, like I said, is only a half inch longer than the one above it so that this will be a tall, skinny paint stick tree using these fun colors and scrapbook papers. Then just to make our paint stick tree be able to stand, I'm taking two Jenga blocks and gluing them end to end. I'm gonna do this twice, and then we will put some glue along the bottom edge of the front of our tree and kind of sandwich our tree between these two pairs of Jenga blocks. And this will allow it to stand up with all of the houses that are also in our winter village. And here it is, I love it. I'm loving these colors for winter. I hope you guys are too. I love all the different textures and dimensions in this project. And you could make as many or as few of these houses and buildings as you want for your village. 
Thank you to those of you who are subscribed and answered the poll on my community tab. If you are not subscribed, I hope you'll consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button. I plan on doing more in my community tab in the coming year. And if you want to have input on what types of videos show on my channel, you will want to, once you're subscribed, make sure you check your notifications when those come up and answer any questions or polls or giveaways that I do just for those subscribers on my community tab. Today's last DIY is super simple, but I wanted to show you another way you could use some of these mesh stencils and repurpose some different types of glass bottles. So this is a blue wine bottle, so great for winter. These snowflake stencils are from a maker studio. I have some coming also from Magnolia. And I'm taking just the white chalk art and we're going to randomly stencil about eight of these around our glass bottle. We'll let those dry completely and those will stay pretty much in place unless you were to wash it off with water. I just love how this looks. Even if you don't use the lights that I'm gonna show you in a minute, just having the blue bottle with the white snowflakes is super cute. You could leave this out all winter long for an added easy decor item. And once my first set of snowflakes was dry, I came back and did one more set of each. So a total of eight snowflakes around my bottle. And then once that is all dry, we can take our lighted um, LED little fairy lights I'm gonna put inside. These I have seen at Amazon before. I know some were able to find them at Walmart this year but I actually ordered mine from LTD Commodities. It's like a wine cork, but it's plastic, but it's got the little switch there for the batteries. So all you have to do is fish these down into your bottle and put the little cork in. Super cute. I have some other stencils that I plan on making some other bottles, and these would look super cute just on a mantle or wherever you'd like for your winter decor. Thanks again for joining me today. Please be sure to let me know in the comments which of these projects was your favorite. And if you enjoy seeing these budget home decor DIY videos, please give this video a thumbs up to let YouTube know that this is content you want to continue seeing.